In the Soviet Union, one of the grand purposes was the destruction of the nation state. And that's exactly what we observe in Europe, in Europe today. Brussels intends to absorb nation states so that they should cease to exist. To try to suppress nationhood and concentrate power at the center of a European conglomerate would be highly damaging and would jeopardize the objectives we seek to achieve. Europe will be stronger precisely because it has France as France, Spain as Spain, Britain as Britain, each with its own customs, traditions and identity. It would be folly to try to fit them into some sort of identical European personality. We were told that the purpose of the Soviet Union was to create a new historic entity, the Soviet people, and that we must forget our nationalities, our ethnic traditions and customs. The same seems to be true of the European Union. They don't want you to be British or French, they want you all to be a new historic entity, European, to suppress all your national feelings and live as a multinational community. Indeed, it is ironic that just when those countries, such as the Soviet Union, which have tried to run everything from the center, are learning that success depends on dispersing power and decisions away from the center, there are some in the community who seem to want to move in the opposite direction. The community is not an end in itself, nor is, is it an institutional device to be constantly modified according to the dictates of some abstract intellectual concept, nor must it be ossified by endless regulation. This is really very, very worrying. The economics isn't working, and therefore the logic is, let's destroy nation-state democracy, and let's place all the power that we can at the centre. But working more closely together does not require power to be centralised in Brussels, or decisions to be taken by an appointed bureaucracy. We cannot even forge our own trade deal with some of the emerging economies in the Far East without going through the European Union, without trying to get the agreement of 28 nations, without having to go through the European Parliament. Surely in the 21st century, a sovereign United Kingdom should be able to say there is an exciting opportunity there. We will forge an agreement with that emerging economy and do the right thing for this country. That's what we will be able to do if we leave the European Union. We are the fifth biggest economy in the world. We are a very powerful country on our own. And of course we will want to reach agreements, not just with the EU. There are huge opportunities outside of the EU, countries like India and Brazil, and those are the ones which we should be concentrating on. Um, I want us to be able to do trade deals with parts of the world where exciting economic things are happening. And if, as we've seen in the last 18 months, both of the UK aluminium smelters have closed down, one of our biggest steel plants up in Redcar and the North East has closed down, and now the British cement industry tell me, that they will be closing down, possibly even the oil refineries in the UK will be closing down because we're following a, following a god of carbon taxes whilst at the same time India and China are frankly totally ignoring them, that this is really a crazy path for us to go down. Our aim should not be more and more detailed regulation from the centre. It should be to deregulate and to remove the constraints on trade lift the yoke of regulation off Britain's entrepreneurs and let them get on with the job. 95% okay. of all business in Britain does not trade with the European Union but has to imbibe all the regulations that come from the European Union costing them extra money and real problems about time and concerns about their ability to do revenue as a result of that. The lesson of the economic history of Europe in the 70s and 80s is that central planning and detailed control don't work and that personal endeavour and initiative do. That a state-controlled economy is a recipe for low growth and that free enterprise within a framework of law brings better results. Even more costly is the burden of EU regulation particularly damaging to our small and medium-sized businesses, which are so important to the economy. This has been reliably calculated as getting on for £25 billion a year. And the flood of new EU regulation is unceasing. I would talk to lots of people who had skills, you know, uh, plumbers and, and electricians. This is about them because they couldn't get jobs on the Olympic Park 
because people were coming in uh, Euro from the European Union, setting themselves, mm -hmm. hotbedding in my constituents and the other, and then getting jobs as though they so, were. And they, they, look, they, I mean, undercut, do you, do you they undercut those who are generally British, qualified people. Europe has to be ready both to contribute in full measure to its own security and to compete commercially and industrially in a world in which success goes to the countries which encourage individual initiative and enterprise rather than those which attempt to diminish them. And we attempted uh, to address within the European Union how big the body of law that had already been imposed upon our businesses was. That was in 2005 and it was 170,000 pages of active legislation. It's probably now a quarter of a million, or perhaps even more than that. And I would suggest, Mr Timmermans, that what we don't need is minimalism. If Europe is to become competitive and to trade globally and competitively, what it needs is the axe. You've actually got to start getting rid of excessive regulation, particularly upon the small and medium-sized enterprises, who in any free market economy could not be expected to maintain the same standards for everybody and everything as the giant multinationals. There are some businesses, usually big businesses, that benefit from regulatory barriers that keep competitors out who want to stay in the European Union. But there are lots of small and medium-sized enterprises. There are lots of entrepreneurs who believe that we could do far better outside. I think it's striking that the people who tend to be in favour of the European Union, big business and the CBI, are the people who favour regulation, who favour barriers to entry, who like things to stay just the way they are. And actually, Britain's always been at its best when we've encouraged the new, the innovative, the creative, the open. And it seems to me that it's the entrepreneurs, the startups, the new businesses that tend to prefer the freedom and the control that would come from being outside the European Union. In the Soviet Union, we had a gulag. I think we have a gulag in the European Union also, also an intellectual gulag known as political correctness. When anyone tries to speak their mind on questions of race or gender, or if their views differ from those approved, they will be ostracized. This is the beginning of the gulag, the beginning of your loss of freedom. I wanted to be able to control our borders, to limit the number of people who come and live and work here. The one thing we will have control over again is our borders. At the moment we don't have control over our borders. There is this right of anybody from anywhere within the European Union to enter Britain and stay here. We would now have the right to decide who should come into this country and who should not. Okay. We would be able to create, as we had in the past, a system whereby if we felt that somebody, uh, we felt suspicious about some individual, uh, and we wanted therefore not to allow them in, that is our right to say no to them at that particular point. We may also be able to demand further background, further background checks done. We it is right now we have no control over what happens when someone arrives in the European Union and gets leave to remain, passports, etc. They can come to the European Union. And we believe that controlling borders and controlling immigration into your country is one of the most fundamentally important points and responsibilities of any government. But we have completely abrogated that now. We have utter chaos and crisis going on in the European Union over migration. Even the Schengen Agreement now is falling apart. You've it means countries like Kazakhstan, indeed the Ukraine, joining the European Union. I see that, um, I see that Tony Blair um, is now helping Albania join the European Union. Well, good luck to them with that.